Okay. Of our three categories, what is this? Molecular. Yeah, this is molecular. And there's no metal here. Uh, and there's no H in front. So it rules out the other two. So we're thinking... Binary? Uh, uh, yeah, binary. So all moleculars will be binary as far as we're concerned. So for moleculars, we have to use the prefixes to indicate the numbers here. So it'll be di for two, nitrogen, space, oxygen, changes to oxide, and the four is tetra, so tetroxide. So dinitrogen, and we can get rid of the A from tetra since there's an O there, tetroxide. Okay? Uh, let's try a couple more. Uh, SN in parentheses C2H3O2 close parentheses 4. Ionic. You got it. Ionic because the tin is there. Tin also can be named in Latin. We know that because tin looks nothing like the letters S and N. So it's also one of those six I want you to know. So we have two options for this one actually. It could be tin. Uh, what goes in parentheses here? Four. Four, that's right. Four in Roman numeral space. What's this? Acetic acid. Clo if there's an H in front, it would be acetic acid, but the name of the ion is? Acetate. acetate. There we go. Acetate. So, tin for acetate. So, in acetic acid, the H changes to an ic. Okay. Is that how that works? So then there's just an H in front. It could also be stan, and what would be the suffix? Ic? Yeah. Stanic for the higher charge, that is 4 over 2. Uh, stanic acetate. Like okay. a higher charge, um, 4 over 2? Yeah, because you could have 10 4 plus, or you could have 10 2 plus. Well, it's 10 4, we determine as a charge, so that's ick. If it was 10 2, then it would be stanus. Okay? How do you know? This might be a dumb question, but how do you know if it's the highest, deserving of an ick like naming? How do you know if there's not The only way to know if it's the highest is to have those numbers memorized. Okay. Yeah, so you do have to know those numbers. Okay, because I just, this intent, like on this page, it just only gives <coughs> 10 2. So oh, yeah, so the first page, and then we'll place your hand out, it just says 10 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, th I think these are just examples. Uh, so you want to go to a further page, uh, not that page, but further on it lists all the Latin ones. Oh, okay. And that, that's the one you want to focus on. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, yeah, take a seat, I guess, there in the hallway. <laughs> uh, and you can sign in as well. Would you all like more examples? Yeah, mm -hmm. just a couple more. A couple more? Okay, okay. Well, the is uh, one of the... Uh, suffixes that we should remember right? Yes, acetate is one of those polyatomic, uh, it's not a suffix, it's a polyatomic anion that you need to know. Definitely. Uh, it comes up a lot. Let's go. Uh, Isn't it, um, anions are negative, right? Cations are positive. Cations are positive, yeah. NiCr207. Okay. So this is ionic. It's got a metal. Nickel. So we go as before nickel. That goes as is. Transition metal. Nickel is one of those funny ones. Sometimes people don't put the two because it's always two or almost always two. But we're going to put that. We're not going to differentiate. Nickel two. And now we need to know this name. Chromium. Close. Chromate. Dichromate. Is, yes. Chromate CrO4. Dichromate. You notice it by the two there. That's your hint. Uh, Cr. Uh, oops. I need to write it out. <laughs> chromate. Uh, dichromate. The, the dye is straight from the name, not because of some molecular naming. 
It's always this. Uh, let's get some painful ones here. Uh, HClO4. So that's aqueous acid. Last name acid, half points. Hydrochloric acid. Close, really close. It's yeah. Hyperchloric. Yeah. Maybe if you av average what you two just said. This is the perchlorate. Okay. So it's perchloric acid. Okay. Um, you write hypo and hyper to distinguish those two, but uh, you just use the per. So this is perchloric acid because it's perchlorate. Nathan, how do you distinguish between the four different um, Cl, Ox, uh, anions? Okay, let's do that if in you, a different uh, color. Yeah. If you don't take off hypo. So this is, should be in the book somewhere in this chapter. Because I know there's hypo, then uh, us, then ick, then you got it. hyper. But how do you uh, determine that in acids if you just do per? I'll show you. Uh, okay. Uh, the key is knowing these names. Mm -hmm. So this is perchlorate. So this is perchloric acid. This is uh, chlorate. So with the H in front, it would be chloric acid. Okay. This is chlorus. Uh, or, or this is chlorite, sorry. So uh, with the H in front, it would be chlorous acid. And this is hypochlorous, uh, hypochlorite. And so with the H in front, hypochlorous acid. So they're all slightly different, uh -huh. either by the prefix or the suffix. Wait, so yeah. that's memorization, right? The O is it, doesn't really uh, uh, give us any clues about determining the uh, suffix. The O, uh, if if there's most of the uh, options you have is between two polyatomics. There are a few. This is one with a halogen. When there's a halogen, there's four options. Zero, one, two, three, and four. And so, this is the chlorate and uh, chlorite. This is the normal ones we think of, chlorate, chlorite. So, they have to think, how do I distinguish higher and lower than that? Because it does occur here. Well, to go higher, they don't just say chlorate, they say perchlorate. And to go lower, they don't just say chlorite, they say hypochlorite. So this, this one's hypochlorite, this one is perchlorate to distinguish between these two. And those you just got to memorize. Uh, and that could happen if you had something like uh, IO4 minus. This is per iodate ion. It's the same function, it just you change the, the center of the stem of the word. Kind of okay. These are like some of the most painful ones. If you get through this, you'll be mostly okay. There's another one that's common on your list. It's MnO4. You'll see that used quite often. This is permanganate, and you can see why because this is perchlorate. Um, it's just that we don't have you worry about any other manganate <laughs> besides the permanganate.